Mastermind Sessions by the Escano Brothers, the number one content creator duo for the world's leading millennial influencers and brands, with work featured in Forbes, Entrepreneur, and Inc. Magazine. This is the meeting for the purpose-driven making moves in entrepreneurship, creating lifestyle, and shaping culture. Come through and vibe. somebody who has started to feel like what they're doing or what they're going through they feel like they're called for a higher purpose how, how do they say find their talent or gift if they don't really have it like if they're not fully aware of it yet like how do they find it within their life appreciate the question bro and uh we could see your your perspective as well from my experience it's reflecting on my past right and there are key nuggets that we all can find when we truly reflect and evaluate it's just like history for me it would be the past year five years ten years or even when i was a child what are the things that light me up what are the things that i do that make me feel most alive and that may not be a skill at this point, but to begin with, it's an interest. And I think everything starts with an interest. Before that, it's the exposure of that interest, right? For example, for music, right? I mean, everyone listens to music. I can't imagine people that don't. Maybe there's some do in this world, but that's fine. But if you came across someone who's like, oh, I make music, and you start listening to, say, they make beats and whatnot, like, oh, this is how you make the beats and stuff, and then I start doing that, I check it out, I'm like, man, I actually enjoy this process. To begin with, I'm not great, but after time, you, you keep repeating that process, you develop that skill, and it can turn into something that becomes of value to someone else. You know, if you put your mind to doing whatever you want to do, you know, good things can happen. For me, context-wise, it's like as, as kids, you know, you and I, especially our family, being ballers, you know, growing up watching Michael Jordan stuff, you're so inspired by Michael Jordan, you pick up a ball, you know, dad bought, bought, us, bought us a basketball, he bought us a ring, you start shooting, you know, like, I want to be like Michael Jordan, I want to do this, I want to shoot, you're like he does, I want to dunk, you know, you start doing it, and then all of a sudden you, you get better at that skill. Yeah, but what, what are your thoughts? I would say the same thing pretty much. If I was to reflect on my own experience, you know, if you are stuck at something that you don't like doing right now, I think as a kid, we're the most innocent and try to remember back as far as possible, whether you were five years old or in your teens. But for me, when I found that I wanted to do music, I think it was a gut feeling, you know, and it didn't make sense to me. It won't make sense, you know, how are you going to make a living from it? Like, where's the money kind of come from? You don't have the connections, you don't know, you don't have the resources. You might not even have the resources yet to do it. But I think, like you said, the things that light you up, you know, and it was about, was this something that I loved, you know? Was this truly something that I loved? And we grew up in a basketball family, and I know for, for me, I, I loved, I enjoyed playing basketball, but I couldn't stand training. I think that aspect of it, when I was comparing basketball and music, it was like, what am I willing to sacrifice for? In basketball, I wasn't willing to sacrifice the time to train it didn't make me happy if i was working on my music i found that i could work on this till early morning then i think you've sort of found your true calling or your your talent or your gift because you can work on that every single day you know and you're not going to get tired or you're not going to feel anything else but like love and passion for what you do I just wanted to say uh, i can recall so many times man seeing you do all-nighters making your beats and stuff and with the projects that we've done like it's really paid off and that's a true testament to really reflect on and recognize what has been your true passion in a way i mean you're still playing high level basketball but now you're playing high level music and this is a skill that you're willing to to sacrifice other things other good things in your life i mean you gave up ball you know, to play in a school in the Philippines for music. And you're reaping the rewards every time. And it's only going to develop and develop to the point where you're going to be inspiring people on a global level, which is amazing. Appreciate that, bro. And I can definitely say the, say the same thing for you. Let's say working on a skill that you're interested in, that you really love to do. Both you and I can agree that it's not always going to be a loving relationship with this thing. It's not about doing what you love on a consistent basis. 
It is yes and it is no. What I mean by that is, yes, you're working on that skill every single day because you want to become talented in that, but with what you love doing comes the potential with growth. And what happens naturally and what's inevitable and what is needed with growth is pain, is resistance, is mistakes, failures. All these things are necessary to be able to grow. So I think what differentiates what someone truly wants to do as opposed to what they'll give up in is that one thing they're willing to do whatever it takes with. I don't know how many of y'all got asthma in here today, but if you ever had an asthma attack before, you short of breath, SOB, shortness of breath, you wheezing. The only thing you trying to do is get some air. You don't care about no basketball game. You don't care what's on TV. You don't care about nobody calling you. You don't care about a party. The only thing you care about when you're trying to breathe is to get some fresh air. That's it. And when you get to the point where all you want to do is be successful, as bad as you want to breathe, then you'll be successful. And I'm here to tell you, number one, that most of you say you want to be successful, but you don't want it bad. You just kind of want it. You don't want it better than you want a party. You don't want it as much as you want to be cool. You, most of you don't want success as much as you want to sleep. Some of you love sleep more than you love success. And I'm here to tell you today, if you're going to be successful, you have gotta be willing to give up sleep. You gotta be willing to work off for three hours of sleep, two hours. If you really want to be successful, some days you gonna have to stay up three days in a row. Because if you go to sleep, you might miss the opportunity to be successful. That's how bad you gotta want it. Even if they hate it, you're gonna hate aspects of doing it, but it's what you want to win in. It's what you ultimately want to win in. Our call to action for this episode is, what is that one gift, that one talent that you've been blessed with, and how are you gonna capitalize on that? We appreciate you joining us here at Mastermind Sessions. If you're loving this content, be sure to subscribe. And if you learned a thing or two and have some valuable feedback for us, leave us a rate and review. We would greatly appreciate it and we would love to read your feedback. You were just a part of Mastermind Sessions.